All right. Okay. So the first words are always the most awkward. So well, welcome everybody. We're really excited to have you guys over at this interoperability workshop. I we've been working really hard with the organizing committee and our host at U USGS to bring you to this day. As I mentioned on some of the comments I've been ma making in online media, this is totally cl cl crowd source bottoms up type of um, workshop. So I, I'm really excited to see this kind of interest in people getting together and trying to tackle some of the most ill-formed problems of remote sensing that are actually getting in the way. We're not bottlenecked on technology or talent, I think. So my name is Ignacio. I run our payload group at Planet Labs. And I'm going to introduce you here to Hamed from Radiant Earth, who is our convener. Oh, we have a picture from last year. Very exciting. So I forgot that I was supposed to talk about it. So <laughs> so we, we started calling last year's ARD 18 because this year is ARD 19. So the genesis of this workshop is a workshop that essentially we ideated with the Radiant Earth folks, especially Chris Holmes here and Hamed. And it was essentially a workshop where we were trying to get together and start defining some of the standard forming activities that happen in satellite data interoperability that actually match how people write software and build tools and develop applications today, right? So there was a lot of metaphors that Chris introduced me to that I really appreciated, like you develop a standard by documenting the software that reflects the standard. The, the code is the standard itself. So, so we didn't really have a venue to discuss this in any conference, so we decided to do what we did last time, which is to convene a, a lot of people around originally the effort that was done on stack and add to that a workshop on satellite, da satellite data interoperability. So we met here at about the same time last year. We had a group that was about the same size, or I would say probably smaller. And we spent three days discussing satellite data interoperability. And some of the cornerstones of the event were how it was a structure. We crowdsourced all the talks, and the talks were interspersed by panels where we engaged in a lot of discussion. So we met a lot of friends and collaborators. And we were excited to do this once again. And here's a picture of what was happening last year at about this time. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, thanks, Ignacio, for the, for the introduction and welcoming. Uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, we are happy and excited to have you here and having the second ARD workshop. As Ignacio mentioned, it's a very much uh, crowdsourced uh, effort, and we hope to continue this in future. So if any of you are interested, actually, to help organize the next ARD20, uh, definitely talk to us. Uh, we, we love to have everybody's participation here. I will talk about Radian later on in the program, but now I want to give a shout out to all the sponsors and organizers and everybody who helped to uh, bring this event together today. Uh, so we, we are the convener. We are helping facilitating this effort, but really uh, we have a convening sponsor helping us here, Planet, and you see many other representatives from Planet here. So a big shout out to the Planet guys for helping uh, and making this plan uh, this event a uh, success. Yeah, definitely. Why not? Uh, Gold sponsors, uh, we will hear from all of them uh, in about 15 minutes. Uh, the Climate Corporation, uh, IEEE GRSS, and also ESRI, uh, all of them working on different aspects of the ARD. So it's good to have them here. Uh, a big round of applause for them. Uh, silver sponsors, uh, Elbon Standards and Technology, KBR, uh, Development Seed, Kapla Space, and Labsphere. Uh, again, all of them joining us in supporting this event. And I think all of them have representatives in the room. So, And all of them have technical talks later in the workshop. So uh, thanks to all of them. And all of these sponsorship is helping with the logistics, with the foods, uh, good dinners we'll have tonight, and the drinks. So thanks to them. And last but not least, the supporters, EOX, Element 84, and Earthcast. Again, thanks to, to all of them. So a final round of applause for all of the sponsors and supporters. Uh, we are very honored uh, to have USGS support us with the facility. Uh, we, they helped us last year. Uh, we honestly get the, event, uh, the, the facility for free. So it's very a big shout out to USGS guys to help us do all the recordings. We make the videos available later on and all the, the room and facilities. Uh, we will hear from Susan soon, but uh, a, a, a thank you to Susan and her team. Uh, the program committee uh, who worked uh, for a couple of months uh, 
having weekly meetings on Monday afternoons, uh, helping and moderated by Ignacio. So uh, Ignacio from Planet, uh, Arin from Planet, Fabio from IEEE GRSS, who could not be with us today. He just came back from the uh, uh, IEEE GRSS conference in Yokohama, so he wasn't able to travel here. Uh, Gopal from Planet, uh, myself from Radiant Earth, Mike Jeff from the Climate Corporation, uh, Rasmus from Planet, and uh, Scott uh, from Descartes Lab. So all of us worked uh, for a couple of months to, to make this even happen. So if you want uh, to be part of this next year, definitely get in touch with either of us. We are happy to have this as a, as a community effort. Uh, you should have received an email from Ignacio uh, on Friday about the program. Uh, it's online, no printing here, saving papers. But if you didn't, you can go to this bit.ly slash ARD19 program and get the PDF file. It includes all the detailed programs. We are just uh, not printing and uh, saving some papers. So bit.ly ARD19 program. Some logistics. Uh, I started with the food, and then I will go to the Wi-Fi. Uh, so we will have breakfast the next two days in the morning, right where you have lunch today, as well as light lunches, the same as today. Uh, coffee breaks in the afternoons. Everything will be out there. Feel free to use also the benches outdoor uh, to have uh, uh, mingling and meetings with colleagues. Uh, as a logistics, restrooms are out of this room on the right, uh, on the same floor. So uh, if you didn't find them, they're not maybe visible with signs, but it's right outside of the room. Uh, dinner tonight at 6.30 at MacArthur Park in, in Palo Alto. All of you are welcome to join. We will have like half an hour, an hour of uh, uh, cocktail uh, drinks and then uh, dinner. Uh, tomorrow we will be at the same time, 6.30, Left Bank, a very good restaurant we went also last year uh, in, in Menlo Park, which is like around five minute drive from here. And Wednesday, any of you who wants to just uh, crowdsourcing, join on any event, it's an optional thing and uh, self-service, it's not supported by events. So feel free to join at the NOLAs uh, around 7 p.m. after the program is done if you're around. Uh, Wi-Fi, uh, either of you haven't uh, yet figured out. There were some papers around, but just in case, there's a two-step process to the Wi-Fi. It's, it's a bit complicated. Uh, but first connect to the Wi-Fi with those user and password, and then go to browser, connect to the actual thing to log in. Uh, I will stand on this for 10 seconds if you want to take a picture or something. Uh, slides. So we had emailed all the presenters to upload their files to a Dropbox folder. Uh, but we figured out when we came here, Dropbox is blocked on the Wi-Fi here. It's a, a, a government facility building. So please email your files to me. Uh, uh, as long as it is like one hour before you're talking, it's fine. I can do the transfer. But uh, please do that as, as soon as, as you can. My email is hamed at radian.earth. And in case you forgot it, just, just found, find me. You can also give it to me with a USB driver, but email would be just easier. Uh, so with that, I want to uh, uh, invite uh, Susan to give you a welcome from USGS. Well, it's great to see so many more faces this year than, than last year. Um, I'd like to welcome you to uh, the USGS campus in Menlo Park. If you don't know, USGS is the premier federal civilian Earth Science Agency, um, and this happens to be the largest campus in, in the Western states. Um, there are a bunch of different uh, groups housed here, and we uh, do research into a wide variety of topics, including earthquakes, volcanoes, water resources, uh, geologic mapping, remote sensing, climate uh, change, and uh, all aspects of the research realize that they need to employ the kind of technology that we're going to be talking about if they want to expand and be really useful. So it's great that we're here. Um, in addition to being a user of, of the data, uh, you guys all know that USGS also provides this type of, of information um, through the National Land Imaging Program and by managing the land processes DAC out at Eros. So I'm delighted to see so many people from USGS here as well. Um, I'm just, it's great to have this kind of combination of data providers and governments and technology and NGOs and ac academia all coming together to, to brainstorm on tough ideas. So thank you so much for coming. Um, I wanted to mention a couple more housekeeping things. First of all, uh, Dario Garcia from my center is here manning this, the streaming and the projector and 
we owe him big time for, for making sure this all works this week. Um, if the fire alarm goes off, I expect everyone to leave the room by the exits, which are clearly marked, and you go down the stairs and wander around to the front. Um, there's restrooms, as, as Hamed mentioned, up here. Um, there's backup restrooms down the hallway or down the green stairs. There are two sets down there. Um, you should be able to connect to Wi-Fi. Um, later on, we're going to have a uh, demonstration from LabSphere, and their uh, devices are set up in the conference room across the way. One final thing to mention. Um, the campus is in the process of actually physically moving to Moffett Field, which is about 10 miles down the road with NASA. And unfortunately, the first move date is on Wednesday. <laughs> so you're going to see a lot of people wandering around looking worried with big red toter boxes. And please be nice to them. <laughs> and, and also, all of their IT support, and the IT stuff has to go first, is carried out by a fellow who happens to sit right over there. So he'll be hauling computers in and out. Just be nice to him. Help him out. Don't get in his way. So I think it's going to be a great meeting, and I'm really looking forward to it. Thank you all for coming. So next, we'll have a, a kind of highlight intro from our gold sponsors. Uh, first, I would like to welcome uh, Peter from Esri. Thank you, Hamid. OK, I just wanted to say it's fantastic to be here, uh, actually representing Esri and one of a number of sponsors of this event. Um, analytical Ready data is certainly something of significant is interest to Esri. Um, <clears throat> we obviously have a lot of users. Oh, maybe I'm too tall. I can hold it, okay. Um, Esri obviously has a lot of users of geospatial data, and analytical ready data is certainly very important for them. Um, not only to actually do their own analysis of their own data, but actually also to actually utilize the results that we're actually looking to create and you're looking to create. So there's a lot of fantastic content that's being created out of ARD, and it's that content that we really want to ensure that our users can utilize and use that to make lots of different decisions. Um, so we also want to make sure that that gets integrated into the various applications. A lot of you probably know Esri as a geospatial company. Probably le less of you know our, our, what we do within imagery. Uh, so within imagery, we break it down actually into five key areas. One of them is content, where we actually provide a lot of content to our users. That's content that we curate from various sources. It's content that we often get from the USGS and ESA. It's also content that's provided by a number of our partners, for example, Planet. The second aspect is map production. This is really about transforming or georeferencing the imagery and doing that type of processing on the data to create authoritative content. The third aspect is analytics. We create a lot of tools which perform analysis, and the ARD is a certainly important part of that, as well as things like deep learning. Um, the, the third aspect is the management. This is really the management of all this type of data, be it ARD pre-processed data or data directly from sources, be it satellite, aerial, or drone imagery. And the last aspect is the visualization and analysis, um, vi visualization and exploitation, which is really taking the content that is created and content that's ma made available within the, within the platform or within other people's platforms and bringing it together to really create those environments that people, our users can let to really make the decisions, which is really what this is all about. What we're all trying to do is to create that content which can then be used to make informative decisions. So with that, I'm looking forward to a very successful conference. I'm actually here with Bo, uh, who's at the back. Um, um, so uh, if you want to come and say hello to us, and uh, we look forward to discussing various aspects with you. Thank you. Uh, next, I would like to invite Maria from the Climate Corporation.
<laughs> Hi, everybody. I'm Maria Angelis Capelades Sola. I'm uh, director of uh, pipeline engineers, uh, engineering at the Climate Corporation, and uh, we're proud sponsors of this event. We were here last year, and uh, one of the things about this event is that um, a brings a lot of competitors together, which is awesome, and it's also super awesome to see so many people that um, we know each other as we know from many, many companies, because we're all in this space, and we migrate between companies, but at the end of the day, we're all here for the same reason, and, one, and the main reason at Climate, and we firmly believe this, is that interoperability standards are really the way forward, because what we want is to differentiate ourselves uh, via where the value added is, and not via like ingestion and pre-processing and all that, and we all know that. We've walked that walk so many times at so many places, and we're still here trying to make it happen. So at Climate, we um, the, the mission of the Climate Corporation now is a subsidiary of uh, Bayer Crop Science, uh, previously Monsanto. Uh, the mission is to, uh, to e help increase the productivity of agriculture in a sustainable manner via digital tools. Uh, that means, in a matter of a speech, uh, to make precision agriculture mainstream, to decrease inputs at the same time that you increase outputs, and to enable better decision making that is data driven based um, in, in the face of like current circumstances where weather patterns are uh, less predictable than they used to be. Uh, never to diminish the farmer and the tradition of farming and uh, the knowledge, the local knowledge, which is so vital and so important and cannot be replaced by anything. But data, in our opinion, is there to increase and enhance and support that local knowledge and, um, and, and improve the, again, the predictability of what those decisions are going to give as outputs. Part of our job is to uh, fuse data that comes from the machines, from the combines, the tractors, the fixed sensors, the weather sensors, together with uh, remote sense imagery. And um, the machines are mostly used pre-planting and harvest, and the remote sense uh, imagery, whether it's from drones, aerial, space born, is for in-season. But we need to fuse all that at the end of the day to provide better outputs and the interoperability of the standards so that we can create um, value later on in the machine learning models or in the modeling aspects rather than in the fusing of the data and the pre-processing of the data. That's where we are putting our beds. Um, so we're super excited to be here, super excited to see many faces that I know. And uh, thank you, uh, Planet and Radiant, for this opportunity again.